Uh, hey guys, what's going on? Yeah, um, here's the little kitten again. Hey, little buddy, how are you? Hey, I'm talking to you. Are you falling asleep? Sleepy cat. Okay. So anyway, guys, uh, yeah, check it out. This thing's awesome, right? Look at this shit. We got this bad boy for slightly over 2000 and the guy didn't know what he had. So I got a steal on this deal. This guitar right here, he thought it was a Rickenbacker 330 from the early 90s. Wrong. Dude did not know what he had. 330s have dot inlays and no double binding. This does. It also has a black R, which is really rare. So yeah, this thing is a Rickenbacker, 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 Rickenbooker. <laughs> I guess it's backer. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, this guitar right here is actually worth about $4,000 right now. So, quite the steal we got. Um, yeah, they're becoming more and more rare, these WBs. And every time we get one, somebody who sells it, they're just like, ah, oh, dang, I shouldn't have sold it. It's, it's so valuable, and it's only going up in value, which is true. They don't make them anymore. They only made them around the late 90s. Uh, no, uh, late 80s, early 90s, roughly. And uh, they're sick, dude. This thing's amazing. We're going to get it refinned. It's got some damages, you know, a little bit of blemishes. Honestly, if we never got it refinned, though, I'd be perfectly ill. I'd be perfectly okay, because uh, th this guitar fucking rocks. It's just badass as fuck. This looks like Hellboy's guitar, you know? This is fucking awesome. So it's a 92, and uh, yeah, beautiful. 92. Isn't that the year of the Red Hot Chili Peppers Blood Sugar Sex Magic album? Fucking, it's close to that time period. Fucking awesome. Don't you like it, you goofy kitty? You sleepy kitty, oh. Yeah, man, I just got up. It's the morning. Because I, I, I wanted to do this video during the week, but I, whenever I get free time at the end of the day, I'm just like, oh, I'm fucking tired. I'm just going to go to bed. I can't think right now. So now it's Sunday morning, my day off, and I got a bunch of shit to do, like laundry, as you can see. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, I got a lot of stuff to do later, but I figured now I'd do the video while I'm resting and getting ready to start the day. I just took a shower, and this fucking jerk right here was in the fucking bathroom with me screaming. God, this little kitten follows me everywhere. It's driving me nuts. Well, not right now. Right now you're being a good little kitty. But, uh, yeah, I shouldn't let the cat in here, honestly. She was chewing on the end of this, uh cable, you know. Yeah. Not not the happiest cat. A little cranky. So yeah, I'm going to make a new guitar probably. My bro, I put together a custom tele for him. Uh and this thing's badass. It's an original 60s neck. Uh it, it's a it's an ash body from Fender that's like um what is it? Uh, it's got like a natural style finish so you can see the wood grain in it and everything and uh, we put in uh, hand wound custom Josefina pickups which cost me like 400 fucking dollars really expensive but they do sound really fucking good so yeah anyway he played it and he didn't like the way the neck felt he doesn't like Fender's new necks and I kind of can't blame him I'm not the biggest fan I, I, I don't care that much personally but he's really picky about it so he won't play the fucking guitar basically just because he doesn't like the way the neck feels and i don't know there's there's a big difference between this and i love it and my my fucking uh you know my crazy custom uh strat here i love it fucking the falcon feels different too and i love it and uh so does the fucking uh les paul over there you know they all kind of have their unique different feel and as much as I prefer the Strat, because the Strat is the most comfortable guitar ever made, basically. Um, these other guitars, they're still fine enough. Like, there's no reason to hate. But my bro, he's, like, super picky. So if there's, like, one thing about a guitar he doesn't like, he's like, oh, yeah, I'm not going to play that. 
So I want him to fucking play it because I put it together for his bitch ass. So uh, anyway, I found this other dude online who sells necks and he does it for like a quarter of the price. I don't know how good his quality is, so I'm taking kind of a gamble, but I picked up a new neck for about 200 and uh, I asked him to make a custom one just for me because I didn't like his selection a few months back and he finally got around to it and put out a new one and it's from, from the description it sounds legit 7.25 radius rosewood canadian hard rock maple nitrocellulose finish by hand uh, basically uh 1962 uh, telecaster reissue specs you know so it's going to be basically the equivalent of a telecaster 62 reissue neck except it's going to have a graph tuck graph tech nut instead of a bone nut which is you know not exactly the same but it's better graph tech stuff is better quality lasts longer and all that so yeah uh, i'm gonna do that but then that means if i do that then that means we have an original 60s neck lying around doing jack shit and so that means i have another guitar project in mind and i i got the perfect fucking thing in mind we bought a 1998 tennessee rose a couple years back and we gave it to our friend justin and he loves it but it was used from 1998 of course my favorite year by the way uh that guitar he also gave us the original pickups that came with it because guess what he had them up he had the pickups upgraded to tv jones classics so the original pickups in that tennessee rose i have them he gave them to us and I just have them laying around. So I was thinking about making a Stratocaster body with TV Jones pickups inside, connected to an original 60s Telecaster neck from Fender. Uh, I think it was made in 2018 or 17, I don't know. But anyway, so I was going to make that guitar. And I was thinking about giving it like some kind of uh, fancy tremolo. I'm not sure exactly what I'll do, but... Yeah, Warmoth, they're getting their shit together on the website, so they're going to be making some changes, so there'll be some new features, so maybe I'll implement some of their new stuff into this guitar project. So, yeah, that's what it's going to be. Hopefully I'll be able to piece it together by the end of the year-ish. And, yeah, that'll be awesome. And I also have the tuners. I, I have uh, original tuners that I want to use from uh, a 72 Thin Line that I got a little while ago. So, basically, I have all the parts. I just got to get the body and uh, the circuitry that activates the, the pickups. That's it, that's the only two things I need to get. The circuitry costs less than like $30, and uh, the body, uh, that might be a little pricey, maybe around 400. I was thinking about doing my own finish to save money. Maybe I'll coat the fucking guitar in super glue or some fucking crazy shit. I've seen that done, it looks cool, it looks like it, it, looks like it works, I don't know. Yeah, there's special super glues you can use as wood finishes, actually. Maybe you guys didn't know that, but yeah, uh, I was thinking about trying that. Although that might be a miserable, stupid fucking idea. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a guitar painter guy. I'm very noob at that. So, but it, you can save a lot of money if you pull it off. So I'm gonna give it a shot. Fuck it. What's the worst that could happen, right? I fail miserably and have to sand it down and then pay a professional to do it. Fuck it if it if that's what it comes to. But so anyway, yeah, guys. Uh, yeah, Halo Infinity. Yeah, let me talk about that. Uh, yeah, Jimmy, I saw that clip that you put up <laughs> of the guy missing like crazy with that stupid shotgun that they have in the game. Jesus Christ, dude. Like, I haven't played Halo in a while, so I'm definitely rusty, I'd imagine, but that dude fucking sucks. <laughs> like, come on, dude. Like, even Call of Duty players could do that better than you. Those... And the Call of Duty kids, overall, are fucking terrible at shooters. Let's just get real. Let's just get real. Honestly, a game, a franchise like Call of Duty is mainly made popular just because so many idiots play it and they run around like chickens with their heads cut off, and then the smarter players just camp in the corner and shoot them all day. And that's basically the experience. And it's been that experience since online console gaming was a thing, basic, basically. I swear to God, every Call of Duty game is basically the same trash over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. God damn, how many Cock of Duties are there? 50? <laughs> Fuck. And, I, and when I say that, I'm serious. I don't mean just like 10 or 11 like the ones you know. No, there's a lot of Cock of Duty games. There's even ones like on the GameCube and shit from 
I, I think, or maybe it was the Wii, I don't know. Ridiculous. Ridiculous franchise is out of control. And it's annoying how popular it is because it influences other developers to copy mechanics. Just look at Halo, for example. They got aim down sights, they got default sprint and shit, they got uh, perk systems, like, like, like fucking faster reload and grenade and stuff. Like, you look at Halo 4, that one copied cock duty a good bit with the care package, an ordnance system, you know, Sp Spartan Ops, Special Ops, you know. There's some conjunctions there. And then Halo 5, you know, even worse with the Spartan abilities. Now everybody has, like, default sprint again, and uh, aim down sights is now a thing. And uh, I saw this comment from this one fucking dickhead who I keep running into on uh, GameSpot forums because I'm an idiot and I keep going there. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, he's a moderator. Uh, I got into it with some incels, and I called him an incel on there, and I got banned, and you're not supposed to say incel to people. You're not supposed to be, you know, rude to others, even though they were being rude to me first, but... Whatever, so I snap back at these bitches, and then this asshole, Mogon, that's his name, he, he's a moderator, and he banned me for a week. And, you know, that's fair, I don't really give a shit. Um, so I guess he was in the right to ban me. Um, hopefully he banned those other assholes, too, I don't know. But anyway, uh, no big deal, but, uh, so anyway, later on, the, I saw that same ass bitch-ass moderator fucking defending crunching in video games so yeah he's this moderator is supposed to be you know the keeper of morals on these uh message boards and here he is uh you know supporting you know uh, slave labor basically in the gaming development world so nice guy right so anyway, uh, yeah, I saw this dickhead make another stupid, annoying comment. He, he, he commented in a very sarcastic kind of tone. Oh, I guess super soldiers in Halo aren't allowed to sprint or swim or aim down sights. Aim down iron sights. Duh. You know, and it's like, Jesus Christ, dude. It's a fantasy game, all right? This is science fiction. It's all fake, okay? It's not real. Stop going for this realism shit. We really don't fucking care. This is a game where they shoot green shit at you and it removes your, your power armor shields and then you can get shot in the head, one-shotted by a BR. And, like, this, none of this really sounds logical or makes sense on paper and it's just kind of weird, okay? It's Halo. It's fiction, you fucking moron. And they're always using the realism argument for as to why Sprint should exist in the game. And it's like, dude... Did you forget that it's a video game and we're looking for multiplayer balance that adds up? It makes sense. All right. This argument has been made before, but I'll make it again just for you fucking, you know, sprint lover dickheads out there. All right. All right. Okay. Uh, I'll give you an example. All right. See, th see this lighter? All right. Now let's say you are standing on this side and I am standing on this side. We're going to try to kill each other in Halo, right? All right, let's say I come over here and I start shooting at you. You start shooting at me. I'm about to kill you because I'm doing better. I'm a better player or whatever. I'm doing better right now. So I'm about to kill you. And guess what? Now you can turn around and run because you got sprint so you can get away. So if I chase you, guess what? Oh, look at that. You can't shoot while running. Oh, look at that. So now you run and I chase after you and we just keep doing this fucking song and dance, dude, until you regenerate your fucking health. It's an easy way for chicken shit players to get the fuck out of Dodge. That's what sucks about Sprint, okay? You understand that, right, you morons? Now, before y'all call me a hypocrite, because I love Halo Reach and a lot of you guys know I love Halo Reach and Halo Reach has Sprint. Yes, I know that. But in Halo Reach, at least a lot of the playlists don't even fucking have Sprint. And they uh, made it so that if you want Armor Lock or, or Invis or some other ability, you have to sacrifice Sprint. So that's a little bit better. It was kind of a risk-reward kind of thing. And a little bit of strategy was put into how you spawn and which class you select and all that. Or loadout. Classes are Call of Duty, my bad. Loadout is what I meant to say. It's a little different in Halo Reach. There's no personalized, detailed classes. You're, you're, when the match starts, you're stuck selecting from a select group of abilities. It's pretty balanced, but 
still kind of unbalanced just because, you know, you might pick an ability that's not great against the player who picked an ability that's good against countering you or whatever, you know? Like, let's get real, Armor Lock was kind of the go-to just because, you know, when working in a team, uh, it ensured people dying less on your team, so it was, like, perfect for Slay. A- a- anyway, my, my point is I really didn't like it in Reach, but I was able to deal with it. Because there were other playlists and other gameplay features that made it obsolete. It wasn't exactly like cock duty But guess what? Halo 5, Halo 4, they are like cock duty in terms of how Sprint works. You know, it's basically the same shit. So, before you guys call me a hypocrite, know that fucking obvious and clear difference, okay? So anyway, yeah, Sprint is back in Halo Infinite, and uh, that sucks. Not a big fan of that. Aim down sights. Uh, I didn't see much gameplay footage showing it off, but it looks like it's back. Pull left trigger, hold it down to look through your scope instead of jamming down on R3. Hopefully they do some settings work and you can change the gameplay features to play a lot like original Bungie Halo games. Hopefully that's a thing that they implement and do correctly. That would be good. Maybe that'll be a thing. I don't know. Uh, they're going for a balanced kind of multiplayer, so that Halo 5, uh, Warzone shit is not a thing anymore in this game, so that's great news. No more pay-to-win microtransaction bullshit like in Halo 5 Warzone, so that's good. Uh, but, uh, what was I gonna say? I had it in my head just a second ago. Um, the balance, yeah, they're gonna have mouse and keyboard players... And then there's also controller players. So how is that balance? Mouse and keyboard players have a clear advantage at aiming. Aiming with a mouse, once you get good at it, fuck, it's way better than aiming with a fucking controller analog stick, okay? It's fucking obvious, and I can explain it. See my hand? I'm holding, pretend I'm holding a mouse. I can aim with my entire fucking hand. My entire fucking hand is controlling how I aim versus a controller analog where it's just the thumb that's in control. This is way less control than this. You understand that, right, you guys? So that's not fair. But moving around on this hand with an analog stick is a little more comfortable and relaxing than doing the whole, you know, crunchy claw hand thing with the, with the you know, W-A-S-D on the keyboard, you know, like that's more uncomfortable in my opinion, but other people mastered it and got really good at it. So anyway, my point is mouse and keyboard people basically have the advantage. So that's not fair if they're going to be fighting controller people, you know what I mean? So I, I heard they might implement like a system where mouse and keyboard people can only fight other mouse and keyboard people and controller people can only fight other controller people. And it's like a, a feature that you can toggle on and off if you care about that sort of thing. So that's that's good news if they end up doing something like that. But that's also bad news because it means you're split, dividing the player base more. Mouse and keyboard people will only be playing with others like that and, and vice versa for controller people. You know what I mean? So it's more division. And that's not a good thing because uh, I remember... Uh, I'll give you an example of why division in the Halo playlists is not good. When MCC first came out, all, f- all four of these fucking Halo games, online, playable, and that means playlists for each individual game, holy shit, the amount of playlists you could come up with would be in the 40s or 50s. 50 fucking playlists across all these fucking games that you can only play on MCC? What the fuck? That means a bunch of playlists are gonna be fucking dead as shit. How are you gonna get that many fucking people to play this game and fill all those crazy separate playlists? You're not gonna be able to. Not really. Halo's not that popular. There's gonna be plenty of playlists that don't fucking... You know, you know what I mean. So uh, the way they did it was they just made this big ass fucking monkey trough, you know, where it's like you don't even know what Halo game you're going to be playing on that thing. And I heard over time in the MCC, they kind of addressed this and fixed it and made better playlists and stuff, but it took them forever. And uh, based on that, it'll probably take take Halo Infinite forever to get its playlists together. These assholes at 343, they they did tell us recently, well, you know, Halo Infinite, it might not be ready when it launches, you know. It's like, really? (laughs) Because it definitely wasn't going to be ready last year. When is this thing going to be actually made and actually ready? Not at launch, obviously. You dickheads are already hinting that it won't work. 
I, I won't work correctly anyway, or good. And that's been the case with all your fucking games, basically. Hey, uh, MCC didn't work for shit at launch. Halo 4 had some fucking problems. You guys didn't beta test, and the multiplayer was unbalanced as fuck at launch. Like, the DMR and bolt shot combo owned every everything else that you could start with in the game. It was fucking unbalanced as shit. Anybody who wasn't using the bolt shot and DMR combo got raped against me. It, it was that obvious. It was that bad. They eventually fixed it like six months after launch, but you, you see my point, you guys? They're not... They're launching these games in dog shit state, you know? Halo 4 was pretty bad. Halo MCC was a drink coaster for $60, essentially, for, for like four years. And it still has problems today, but uh, whatever. And then uh, and then we got, uh, what is it, uh, uh, Halo 5. Yeah, it has microtransactions. It launches with no forge, no big team battle, no no firefight, you know? Come on, man. And the theater mode is jack shit. And, and Forge was trash when it first launched on Halo 5. And as, as time got, just time went on, it got a little better, but then it got like laggier and glitchier and shit. You know, what the fuck, right? So, and then Halo 4 comes out, and that also had a lot of problems, especially with the server, people getting booted from matches and stuff. And then it has microtransactions in the multiplayer for its stupid blitz mode or whatever it was called. And the story is fucking awful, just like every other thing that 343's written. Okay, maybe I'm being a little mean. Awful slash mediocre, okay? There you go, Halo uh, Halo 343 writing fanboys out there. Jesus Christ. Anyway, so, um, yeah, uh, basically I summed up the track record of 343 just now. They fucking suck. They fucking suck it up a lot. They don't do a good job. And it's been a long fucking time since we got a big Halo game. And this one is pretty underwhelming looking, you know? Like, oh, jeez. I was hoping there would be more depth to that grappling hook, you know? I was hoping you could, like, hang a dude off a ledge in front by his fucking neck or something. Or, like, like shoot it. And, or, like, maybe your teammate is falling off a ledge and you can shoot it down at him and grab him and pull him up and save his life. While, in the other hand, maybe shooting a dude or something. I don't know. That would be kind of cool, you know? There's a lot you could do with that grappling hook, but in the game, it just looks like all it's good for is swinging like Tarzan across a room or whatever, pulling yourself up to a new location. Basically, that's all it looks like it's good for, you know? I'm not very impressed. Um, when you shoot it at an enemy player, it just reels you in towards them. You can't actually, like, pull a fucking scorpion and shoot it through their neck and fucking kill them and drag them over to your body and use them as a human shield or something. Nah, you can't do anything like that from the look of it. So that sucks. Uh, the grapple jack is kind of cool, you know, using it to fly up to an aircraft and skyjack a dude. That, that's kind of cool, kind of cool, not too shabby. I dug that. Not everything from the trailer was completely stupid. Uh, the new guns, I'm not impressed by, like, any of them. That skewer thing, the new pit bull shotgun, that dumbass assault rifle-looking thing. Real generic-looking, cock duty style-looking weapon. Um, yeah, and then uh, a lot of the Covenant weapons are, like, really big and bulky. They take up a lot of fucking visual screen stuff. And the game is really flashy and sparky, so, like, it looks like it's hard to see at some times during intense combat. Not a big fan of these changes. The sparkly grenades and guns that hit the ground. Yeah, when guns hit the ground now, they fucking light up like a Christmas tree. Sparks come off. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sparks come off of them like crazy. It's, it's weird. Um, I guess they're trying to be realistic, but uh, last time I checked, uh, especially when I was working in restaurants and in construction and shit, like fucking... I've dropped heavy metal things on heavy metal floors, and it was not that sparky, okay? I don't know what, what's in these guns. Electrical high voltage. <laughs> Maybe they're like the guns from Judge Dredd. You know, they have a fucking, you know, detailed fail safe inside of them or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So anyway, uh, but yeah, Jimmy, uh, I got your message about the microtransactions in the game and the battle pass stuff. And I learned how it works. And it looks like it's going to be a less wallet rapey business model than Halo 5, which is nice. But... <sighs> I can't trust 343, man. I can't fucking trust them, you know? And they're saying cringy things, too, like, 
I think Halo means something different for everybody, and I think that's what makes Halo great. And it's like, now what makes Halo great is it's a really fun shooter that's really solidly built and has fun mechanics and that, that 30 seconds of fun, you know, that multiplayer experience, that epic campaign, that heartwarming story about a soldier just trying to do the right thing, that kind of stuff, you know, like... That's what most people are into Halo for, and you got you assholes at three four three don't seem to realize that. No, nope, instead you just seem to focus on wallet rape, microtransaction bullshittery. So that's what it means to you assholes. Money. No wonder you said that. I'm sure you guys do think that that's what makes Halo so fucking great that you can profit off of it massively. Fuck you guys at three four three. And uh, yeah, I'm just wow, you know, like. Just a lot of platitudes and stuff, I swear to God, you know, empty slogans. We're trying to cater to the old fans and the new. Like, yeah, you said that with the last few games that highly disappointed old fans and did not sell that great compared to Bungie Halo titles. They were not played as much as Bungie Halo titles. You know... And they definitely didn't get review scores as high as Bungie Halo titles. These are facts that I'm saying, you assholes. Anyway, so... Yeah, good good job, Jimmy. Those are good points you're making. And uh, don't listen to the hating dickhead 343 fanboys that are constantly putting pressure on you and shit. It, just ignore them. I started ignoring them. I only make fun of them from time to time just for fun, but for the most part, I don't talk to those assholes anymore. I just ignore them. They're crazy. They're weird. They're creepy. They they try to attack you on a personal level and stuff, and, like, they would dox you. They would find out where you live and fucking spread that information around if they got the chance. They're chud cells. They're weirdos, a lot of them. Creeps, too. And it's funny that uh, that one dickhead that was giving a shit, that moron ghoul or whatever his name is, uh, that fucking idiot, Jesus Christ, that dude, he's all psyched up for Halo Infinite. What a fucking fanboy. And you said he was a trimper? Jesus Christ, and he's a trimper too? Why does he even care about this game then? Last time I checked, Microsoft said Black Lives Matter. Oh shit, Trimpers, you hear that? Microsoft says Black Lives Matter. They support Black Lives Matter. The terrorist organization. Yeah, the, that thing that you fucking idiots consider a terrorist organization. BLM. Microsoft supports them. Don't you hate that as Trimpers? Shouldn't you hate that? Doesn't that mean you should hate Microsoft? You should hate 343? You shouldn't be interested in this game at all because it offended your fragile little dumbass, misunderstood, misled fucking political views? Misled, that's what I meant to say, not misunderstood. You, you assholes are not misunderstood. We understand you completely. You're Nazis. Fuck you. That or you're just really fucking dangerously stupid. <laughs> so, anyway, that's my point, you know? Like, why, why do you even care then, dickhead? You know? The company making your game uh, are a bunch of SJW cucks. A bunch of leftist, uh, you know, uh, uh, woke, uh, 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 you know, uh, democratic agenda pushing, uh, you know, pedophiles, right? That's what you Q-sippers fucking call anyone who's not like you, even though you guys actually have a bunch of pedophiles within your ranks, which is a fact but whatever, y'all are massive hypocrites. <sighs> so, yeah, Jimmy, don't listen to these weirdos. Jesus Christ. <laughs> but, you know, I, I don't have to tell you that. You're not an idiot, Jimmy. You already know that. But I'm just saying, I'm just reminding you why these people are fucking idiots. Because don't get me wrong, from time to time, a motherfucking moron, a broken clock is right, you know, once in a while, right? So sometimes these idiots will actually make a decent point. And then you'll start to think, oh, maybe they're, maybe they're right. Maybe they're not so stupid. Maybe I should start listening to them. No, just don't, dude. Just don't. Any decent point they ever make is on accident or in bad faith or something, you know? Don't trust these guys. They're 343 fanboys. They're hanging out on the Halo Shield channels like, like Act Boy and... and uh, uh, numbskull or whatever his name is these guys they go out and hang out at 343 industries and pal it up with those motherfuckers they make deals with them they get free xboxes free games free subscriptions free a lot of shit 
And then they go on to their channels and they tell you, oh yeah, Halo's great, huh? Can you trust a motherfucker like that? Seriously? Give me a fucking break. They're a bought and paid for tool. And then they do videos going, ha oh, ha, everyone thinks I'm a Halo shill. That's not true. What a bunch of idiots they are. And it's like, well, you're doing business with them. Big time. You're making deals with them. You're not acting like the average Joe who works a service job who, who where $60 is a decent bit of money to that person, where they go out and work. And then when the game finally launches, they can actually buy it with their hard-earned cash and experience it like a normal fucking person. You, you motherfuckers, you Halo Shill channel bitches, you don't fucking have that experience. You practically get these games for free. Fuck you. And you get them earlier than everybody else. You know, I can't trust you guys. All you do is lick that 343 bunghole. This is my problem with you a-holes. I can't trust you. You're biased as fuck. You know? Like, you bitch and complain about Halo, and then, and then you just buy the game, play the game, get it for free, whatever, and, and then the next thing I know, I'm seeing you playing cock a duty an even more corrupt and crappier shooter franchise, you know? And then you, and then you bitch about that, but you, 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 you do videos on it, you make money off of it, you know? Like, without it, you, you guys wouldn't even have jobs. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, you're not normal people, okay? You're weirdos. And I want to hear opinions from normal people who would experience the game like I would. Uh, just an average Joe stopping into the store to buy the fucking game, you know? So, that's my point about those people. And that's the beef I've always really had with them. So, and, and uh, I, I, I don't know, but last time I checked, it was like Halo 5. Four follower, Halo 5 follower, Halo Infinite follower, I don't know his fucking name is, but last time I checked, that guy was like the biggest Halo YouTuber or whatever, and uh, I, if you guys recall, he didn't pay a bunch of people who worked for him, because he's a piece of shit, and he looks like Millhouse, and uh, yeah, so, yeah, th this is, these are the, these are the big Halo channels out there, these shill types, these full of shit types, these weirdo types. And they always try to make paint themselves as like like these saints, these these big voices for gaming. When they're they're just frauds, they're just dumbasses. A lot of the time they don't know shit. And a lot of the time, if you read their their offhanded comments on like Twitter and shit, they'll often say racist and sexist and stupid things, pro corporate bullshit. You know, <sighs> these people suck, dude. Neo lives, dude. What do you fucking want, right? Like Ninja, he's one of them. That fucking doofus. Did you see that dickhead? He got all fucking mad because he got one-upped by somebody on Twitch who's better looking, more popular, better at games, isn't a fucking giant dickhead compared to him. And he got all butthurt that he was all like, well, as sad as I am, records were made to be broken and, uh, you know, whatever. <laughs> and it's like, dude, do you actually think that your hard work and efforts are justified like you actually earned your position in life like you actually deserve the millions of dollars that you got like don't get me wrong dickhead I, I believe you're a hard worker I am lots of fucking people are but you think you deserve that like what what are what's your net worth like 50 million or something I don't know I, I know you've made like 50 to 100 million dollars in the past like five ish years because of Fortnite and the popularity of dumbass streamer types like yourself so because of that you definitely didn't earn all that money my guy <laughs> you definitely didn't give me a give me a fucking break uh spending 10 to 12 hours a day or every other day playing video games on a stream you think that justifies earning that much money please you're lucky you're privileged that's what that is suck it up but yeah, in a stream recently, this ninja dickhead, some guy was giving him shit about, um, um, what do you call it, uh, the fucking, um, his gameplay on one of his streams, because he sucks at League of Legends, so some people were making fun of him talking shit, which isn't very nice, but his response was, I could fucking buy your family tree. It's like, oh, okay, so you're into, you know, buying people and slavery and shit like that. I mean, let's get real, he was just joking, and he can't actually do that. We live in a modernized society where slavery 
if he were to pull something like that, he'd be in like deep shit. It would the optics would be terrible. It would ruin his career, you know that kind of thing. So of course he was just talking shit, but it just goes to show you what a disgusting piece of shit he really is. Because this is a guy who put up money for Black Lives Matter, trying to act like a saint, and then in in the same breath here he is like, I could fucking buy you and destroy your life. Fuck you. How dare you talk talk down to me? You know, like you're a piece of shit. Fuck you, dude. So anyway, uh, I got more stuff to talk about, but that, that's enough for this video. I'll continue on in another video later. So yeah, Jimmy, uh, keep on keeping on, and um, yeah, uh, I'll do a part two later. Uh, I got to get started and do a bunch of shit right now. I got a bunch of laundry to do. So yeah, later dudes.